Hello everybody. This is Jeanette with Stardust and Moonlight Reborn Dolls and I'm so excited because we are gonna do a how-to video today. So Merry Christmas Eve Eve. Can't believe Christmas is around the corner and I hope you all have a lovely holiday season. I'm so excited. I have a lot of fun things planned, a lot of time off from my actual job aside from painting dolls which is just a hobby and uh, I'm ready for it. So before we get into all of that holiday magic coming into our lives, why don't we dip into a how-to video? I really wanna show you guys how to keep your dolls shine free and do touch-ups, even if you have no experience with painting. So first, let me zoom in on the doll. That would be super helpful, right? <laughs> All right, this is my Scarlet. No matter how well your doll is painted, no matter how well it's varnished, even despite being varnished with a double layer or a triple layer, your doll is gonna get shiny. It's just going to happen. And the reason that is, is because we have body oils and we handle our dolls regularly and it just happens over time. So how do we prevent that without having to send our doll into an artist and spending all this money. Well, I'm gonna show you that today. You do not need painting experience. Um, if you hear some crunching sounds, that is my beautiful standard poodle Zoe eating some dog food. <laughs> so that'll be a fun little, oh, that's so cute. I love hearing dogs eat. It's a cute, it's a cute sound, but just so you know what it is. Um, this is gonna be very affordable. I'm gonna tell you how to DIY your doll, keep the shine away without having to bake, without having to take your doll apart, and without having to spend more than $30. So the first thing you're gonna need is parchment paper, okay? And you're gonna lay out your doll on a sheet of parchment paper. The next thing you're gonna need is soft touch varnish by deco art all of the things i'm showing you by the way are available on amazon and this is under twenty dollars you're also going to need some cosmetic sponges i typically use latex free because i also paint silicone and latex mixing with the compound of silicone is a no-no um, so I always get these. These are kind of nice. They're really cheap ones, but they're also porous. So they have a texture to them. But you can get any kind of sponges that you want for this project. And then you're gonna want a brush, just a cheap small brush. This is actually a bigger brush than I would typically use, but I just grabbed it and I'll make it work. And you're gonna want Eileen's paper glaze. Now the reason I'm suggesting you get this is because if you varnish your doll um, with this touch-up method I'm about to show you and you're doing just the areas like the hands and the feet, you are going to most likely take away the glossing of the nails. And so this product is perfect for that. Very user-friendly. Uh, you just want to use a really tiny amount because you want the nails and the lips to have a slight gleam to them. You don't want them to look like there's nail polish or lip gloss going on, right? So I will show you this step as well. So we're gonna dive right into it. Now, the first thing I wanna say is you can varnish your entire doll in one sitting. If you were to do that, what I recommend is placing, let me scoot her a little bit down closer here so I don't have to stretch across the table. Oh, there's Luna. I have a viewer that loves Luna. <laughs> Say hi, Luna. Okay, so um, if I were to varnish this whole baby, you will notice the legs are like uplifted. I can make sure that they're not touching the ground, which is great, but these arms are gonna touch. So what you'll do after you varnish the baby is you're gonna gently place the arms on top of a cosmetic sponge. And then you would wanna do this 
also with the head. The only problem with this method is that you are kind of running the risk of these hard edges of the sponge potentially changing the texture of the varnish you're putting on in that specific area. There might be a hard line. So if you wanna prevent that from happening, my recommendation is doing this in a two-part process where you varnish the top layer of your doll. And then when it dries, you wait about two hours, you flip your baby over and you're gonna varnish the other side. That's how I would recommend doing it. But if you're in a rush, you wanna do the whole baby, you can put sponges underneath the arms so that it's not laying on the table. Just know that there is a possibility that you are going to have some hard edges that dry in your varnish layer. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. This is super easy. This should only take you about 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole baby and just to get through it and show you. So you are simply going to dip your sponge in this varnish, okay? And then you're gonna set the varnish aside and you're gonna start going to town. Now, as you can see, it's white, but as you um, pounce it, it's going to dry clear or it's gonna go on clear. I'm actually gonna take this diaper off so that it doesn't get in our way. And this diaper. Okay. So I'm just gonna continually pounce this all over the doll. It's really simple to do. Anyone can do this. Now, when you get to this creasing area, if you wanna be really careful, you can kind of brush the creases with a dry brush to make sure the varnish doesn't pack in there. But with this varnish, that's not a really big issue. You just wanna be careful there's no buildup and you can even use the edges of your sponge, okay? So the key is to really smooth it out. You don't wanna see any white. See how it's getting clear as I pounce it? And you can almost instantly see the results. As soon as it actually starts drying, you'll see the results. Now let me zoom in and show you the texture of this. Because this sponge is so textured, look how that's going on. Can you see that? It's really giving a beautiful texture. So, here we go, let me, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna finish this leg and then I am just gonna take another sponge and I am going to crop this leg on a sponge and go to the next. Ooh, it kind of smells strong. Well, this leg will just stand on its own. That's kind of cool. All right, and I, do, I just go right over the toenails because I can go back with paper glaze and put a fresh um, coat of uh, gloss right over it again. So, you know, I do that just to make things easier. Now, if you don't get this, which it's very cheap, I think it's $6 or under, then you wanna be very careful around the toenails and the lips. You don't wanna put this varnish on it if you prefer those areas to have a little gloss to them. Okay, we're gonna do the second leg. And again, I'm doing the entire doll because she is really a bit shiny all over, but you do not need to do that. If you just wanna focus on the toes and certain areas, then this will go a lot quicker for you. Now, when I varnish dolls in my collection, I have always, hi Luna, I've always taken them apart and used matte varnish and baked it. So I am a heat set painter. I probably will never use air dry paints or mediums, but we went through 
a bit of a crisis where he Genesis heat set paints uh, went out of business and now the good news is there are other products to try and I hear they're quite good but you know there was a little bit of a panic and the um, heat set mediums like matte varnish and um, thinning medium and dewy skin varnish and all of that was very difficult to get and so it was like gold so I was trying to find a way to touch up my personal dolls when they get shiny without having to use the products that I want to save for my customers when I paint dolls for them because I wanted to make sure I gave them the varnish that is the best quality in my opinion. So that's how I discovered this. I knew about this product. A lot of people have used it with success. Um, I did research. I know that it's not going to impact a, a doll that is heat set painted. So I got this and I'm really happy with the results. And the first thing that came to mind was this is something that would be amazing for collectors to know about who get shiny dolls because I know that shiny dolls can, whoops, over time, <laughs> sorry to bump you there. Let me adjust this. I have the worst phone stand ever. I should get one for Christmas and treat myself. Um, what was I saying? Oh, shiny dolls can impact the user experience or the collector experience. You know, um, it's not very realistic. It's okay if skin looks a little dewy, but we don't want shine because what does that remind us of? A plastic doll. And that doesn't look great in photos. And um, I know collectors will sell when their dolls get shiny sometimes and they just kind of trans um, translate it into like losing their bond. But I think because they get shiny, that really contributes to that. So anyway, I wanted to do this video to help collectors who don't paint dolls, you know, who get nervous to even take the head off and adjust the weight of the doll, which I remember that because I started as a collector before I became a uh, artist. And just the thought of like taking the doll's head off and having to put it back on freaked me out. I didn't want to do it. I was like, okay, what if I do it wrong? What if I, um, you know, mess something up? So I get that. So this is really easy. You don't have to take your doll apart. You don't have to be an expert at art or painting or anything like that. You just simply have to dab a product onto the doll and wait for it to dry. And then your doll will magically be back to a very nice finish that is not shiny. I also recommend using gloves for this. It's not necessary, but I usually do. And for some reason, I didn't. Also be really careful with fuzzies. You wanna wash your doll down before you do this layer because when you put this air drying varnish on, it will collect, um, seal in any lint or dirt that is on your doll. Okay, so we are almost done. I'm just dipping and putting it on. Super easy, right? There's no one out there that can't do this, I promise. And it will really help you feel empowered to maintain your collection and keep your dolls in pristine condition, especially if you're going to sell. Even then, you want your dolls to look their best because I have seen time and time again where people sell their dolls for a reduced price because of the shine or people are selling their dolls, listing them in a buyer you know, comments on the shine of the doll and ask for a lower price. I have seen that time and time again. So this is a way for you to take away the shine. And I would just be forthright in your listing and say that this doll, you know, for example, was painted with heat set paint and varnished with heat set varnish. 
And then I went over to touch up the doll and re-varnish it with an air drying varnish. Okay, so we are on the last stretch, which is the head, the beautiful, beautiful head of this doll. And we are going to get it done. Don't be nervous. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put a big blob. Don't be nervous when it's white like that, okay? You're just gonna get that out of there. You're gonna pounce it out until it's clear. And it's gonna be more prominent if you have a painted hair baby with dark hair. And you're gonna think, oh my gosh, it's not working. It's gonna dry white, but it won't, I promise. You just gotta keep going. So I usually try to avoid the lips because it's easier to avoid than the nails. And then your lashes are gonna start getting sealed in with the varnish. You wanna brush those up a little bit so they don't stick. Okay, get the neck. Oops, I probably got the lips a little bit there, so no big deal. I'm going to um, come back on and show you how to get those Nails nice and uh, glossy again. Now, if you have a rooted doll, you are going to want to put the hair up as far as you can. And I would recommend using a shower cap. You can get one from the dollar store. Just a cheap little shower cap that will help keep the hair out of the way. Be careful with fingerprints. Think about walking in the snow and you wanna cover up everywhere that, you're, that you um, touch down if you're trying to cover your tracks because your fingerprints will dry into the varnish. So make sure you go over those areas. Okay, she's kind of um, dewy looking which is okay because dewy is a natural look to skin. So I prefer texture with my varnish. When I varnish my dolls with matte heat set varnish, there is a texture, it's a little bit gritty. This is a soft touched varnish, so it's smooth to the touch and silky, but if your doll is varnished with matte varnish, this is not gonna take away that texture. It's gonna be varnished on top, you're still gonna feel that texture. If your doll is not varnished at all and you're using this as a primary varnish, then the doll will be smooth to the touch. But I don't recommend this as a primary varnish, or I should say I can't recommend it as a primary varnish. I am still a big fan of heat set. I particularly love heat set varnish and baking it in, but for those touch-ups, I can definitely get behind this. So we're gonna let her sit and dry for about two hours. And then I'm gonna come back on, gloss her nails and her mouth again, show you how to do that. And then we'll be all done. See you then. Okay, we're back. We're back, she's dried. And you can tell she looks much better. Now I'm gonna show you without the ring light on, because you can really tell that the shine is gone. When you have light projecting onto your doll, it's gonna automatically give you um, some kind of bounce back with shine. But look at that. I mean, she's got more of a dewy finish than a completely matte finish, but I actually like that. Um, there is a way to play with this and give it more of a matte feel to it and that's by mixing cornstarch and so forth into it. But I wanted to make sure I gave you guys the easiest go-to way and your doll's gonna look much better. It's gonna take that shine off. Look at those toes. Okay, so I'm gonna pop the light back on and we are going to finish up by glazing the areas that I went over with the varnish. So now, her nails have no gleam to them at all because I put the varnish on them. So let me show you. Uh, 
and that's okay it's not the end of the world obviously but if you want to give that little glossiness back to the doll then i'm gonna show you how to do it super easy this stuff dries very fast so if you want to keep your brush you're going to want to dip that brush in brush cleaner right after you use it so when i say you're going to want to use a small amount you're going to want to dip it and get the tiniest amount possible and you're going to um my hair is attached to it Hold on. then you're going to want to scrape that like you you don't even want to see it on your brush because you want to be able to manipulate your brush and like barely put it on. I'm barely touching. The thicker it goes on, the more it'll look like nail polish. So I am just gently brushing and then pouncing it in. It's barely there. And you want to be careful not to get this on any parts of the fingers because it will create a shine where you put it. But if you happen to make a mistake and do that, you can go back with another brush on the area that you accidentally got on the doll and then you can um, just put the varnish back over it. So the point of this is none of it is the end of the world where you can completely ruin your doll. I wanna really make sure that collectors feel a little bit empowered to do these steps for maintenance and not be afraid. Okay. This one's a little tricky because it's close to the finger. This dries really fast again. So you want to work quickly. And let me do the toesies. My favorite part of any doll. I love that, uh, this is Scarlet by the way. And she is a sold out kit. She is my only three fourth limb baby. Probably the only three fourth limb baby I'll ever have. Um, well, maybe not because honestly, getting her made me realize three fourths isn't that bad. And I think there is kind of this thing in the reborn community where especially serious collectors kind of put a stigma on three fourth limbs. And I know I just did that. <laughs> My bad. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I do have, um, I do have a little bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What I do avoid is like three fourth arms and legs. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically, you can see here that this shoulder is a part of the cloth body. So the arms aren't full arms that go all the way up to the shoulder. And what's great about these is the posability is amazing. There's so many more options with posing because you have, you know, the flexibility there. But people just don't like them. They, they want to be able to put like their doll in a onesie without um, sleeves. Now, if you have three fourth legs, your legs are gonna come up to about here, right, the vinyl, and then you're gonna have cloth here. The three fourth arms and legs, that's a little bit hard to accept. It's just the way it is. People like full limbs. But Scarlet here, she is a kid that is so special. I love her and she's worth it. <laughs> So she's definitely worth it. There we go. So we're done and that air dry gloss is basically dry in a few minutes. And so what we'll do is 
get her dressed again. I'm actually gonna pick a different outfit because I haven't changed her in like a year. How horrible is that? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And we will go with a little gender neutral outfit. See how this looks on her? <laughs> nice and cozy. She has not been out of that other outfit since last year. So terrible. So terrible of me. I don't get her out often, but she's definitely um, special. I mean, she's kind of a display. I mean, they're all like that, but I don't know. I don't have her out a whole lot. And I have a very hard time covering her feet with socks. I think socks would look so sweet with this outfit, but she's got amazing feet. She's got rabbit feet. They're just so long and cute. Oh, I forgot her diaper. That'll just bug me knowing she doesn't have one on. So I will get that back on her. I hope this process was easy to follow, you guys. I hope that you feel confident to do this yourself. And just know that it's really easy and you can't do anything terribly wrong with it. Just take your time and you'll be fine. I'm gonna zoom in on her. <laughs> She's so cute. Love this kit, man. I love it. Isn't she amazing? She is so sweet. There she is. With a fresh coat of varnish. She'll look great in pictures. And natural lighting. Shine is gone. Very soft. Shine free finish. You got her gloss back on. Very lightly the way I like it. And she is ready to be snuggled. There we go. So Hope you like this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and have a very lovely holiday season. See you later. Bye.